one of the things that was made really clear to us is that this has to look like a comic book. That had a huge influence on us and how we approach our effects work. Because usually we approach effects work by simming it, simming, doing like pyroclastic simulations and smoke simulations. And at first we thought that that's how we could approach the film by still continuing to do those simulations, but then filtering or treating them in some way to look 2D. In the end, that didn't work out so well. So we had to go back and rethink our whole approach to how we're going to do the effects work. And, and it was mainly, we had to start thinking in thinking more like 2D artists in the way that we were designing our effects, in the way that we were um, building our systems. It just didn't generally in the way we were thinking. We were thinking too much like visual effects artists and not enough like 2D artists. At first it was pretty hard. Um, we had a lot of uh, reference, right, to, to look at, a lot of like anime, a lot of comic book reference. And um, I actually suggested to a lot of the artists, like, look at this 2D effects animation book. Like, just look at it, read through it, get some of those ideas in your head, because we're going to have to use these to hit the notes that they want. We used Houdini in all kinds of ways. Uh, we used it for motion blur, creating these really interesting kind of abstract motion blurred lines. Um, we used it for creating like impact lines where say a character is busting through a door, we would create these very procedural kind of like spiky shapes that were very similar to like anime style um, motion streak lines. We used Kudini for creating the multiverse, which was a very intricate web structure essentially. And Houdini was like the perfect tool for creating this really intricate structure that we could, once we had our tool created, we could make small changes to parameters and get very different looking type, uh, procedural structures out of it. So we also used uh, Houdini for webs, uh, all sorts of other effects that we are traditionally like not really like effects. We, we used it for the snow on the trees, uh, the snow at the bottom of the trees. We used it for um, the motion blur of the snowflakes. Uh, we used it for the tree leaves. Uh, the tree leaves had to match this abstract art, um, and I think we did a pretty good job of that. Uh, we were able to iterate many times um, in a day um, and get many different variations out. We used it for the Kirby dots. Um, again, some pretty simple setups were set up modularly with the node-based workflow to allow us to easily manipulate many shots at once, um, essentially. Josh Beveridge approached me and asked if there's anything I can do to help technically solve this problem of applying inclines to the character. And the reason we, we did the whole inclines thing is because inclines were a very distinctive feature of comic book language, right? So they're, they're an important feature to have. And we, we always knew that we we're gonna have to do inclines of some sort. The only question was how we were to do it technically. We took um, our geometry from 3D and then we shifted it into a 2D like camera space and then we drew, drew lines on top of it. So we were working in a 2D space, which made sense for drawing. And then we projected those drawings back onto the geometry and then shifted it back in 3D space. Those kind of like really difficult data manipulation type tasks are really difficult in other kinds of software. But in Houdini, they're just like simple kind of things that you do as a standard, as an artist, just working day to day. So we had like 800 incline shots to do. So we couldn't, any efficiency that we could make uh, would be a big time saving. I think we came up with a system that worked quite well. And in the end, we ended up using machine learning to help um, uh, augment the system to make it faster. Basically with the machine, with machine learning, the, the main thing that you need is examples. So we, the very first thing we had to do was create a lot of exa example data of what the incline should be for different camera angles. So we, we created those examples. Uh, we, we basically set up a scene where we had that was specific to machine learning. So we had the, the, these very simple head turn scenes where we that would create lots and lots of examples of all the different types of angles that the character's head is turning. And that became our training data. The difficult part about machine learning is sometimes is expressing the problem that you have at hand in a way that is conducive for machine learning to learn from. One of the things that I think is amazing about Houdini is that it's built on data, right? Data is like the core of Houdini. And it's, if you think about it, that's actually perfect for machine learning, right? Because machine learning is all about data as well. So they make a perfect combination. So the fact that Houdini is so like uh, driven by data and so open by data, it, it made machine learning the, the obvious choice, like the obvious partner. And the way, how easily you can write out data from Houdini, right? And how it's, it's, 
its ability to export data and then import it into into um, a machine learning algorithm to learn from, or within Houdini, like using the Python SOP is amazing. And we 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 exported our data, our training data, and trained the the application all within Houdini, and then we made calls to the machine learning um, algorithm directly from within Houdini also, which is just like it's it's a great workflow. You know what machine learning feels like right now? It's when I first started out in the industry about 15 years ago, everyone said to me when I was first learning CG, everyone said to me, oh, you kind of missed the boat with CG. It's kind of like it's had its day. And at the same time, there was, I felt there was a lot of potential there with CG, right? So I went into the, after I graduated from fine arts, I was like, I think there's potential in computers and art. I'm going to do that. I don't care what anyone says. I'm going to, I'm going to focus on that. And that's how I feel about machine learning right now. It's there's so much potential in that field. It's a bit of a gold rush right at the moment with people coming up with ideas. And I think if you struck the right idea right now with machine learning, there's a lot of like potential to make some really cool stuff. I can see it being used in a bunch of other areas, like obviously simulations, um, making them look more realistic, maybe giving the artist a good first pass to start from and then to tweak. Um, I can see us just generating huge libraries of stuff that looks similar but different enough to where we can just like place it in a shot and you get a lot of nice variation, like a lot of natural variation. We, we really hope that this film it just sets an example of what can be done that's outside of the norm, that's outside of regular CG looking animated shows, that's really driven by like artistic passion and like uh, artistic content. And we really hope that this kind of like perpetuates in the future.